Welcome to Pray 16. For the next hour, you are invited to stand with other believers as we pray and release the power of God into the lives of his people. Remember, if you're not praying church, you're just playing church. Coming to the studio in five, four, three, two, one. Hallelujah. Good to have you with us today at Pray 16. We'll be with you for an hour here to pray and seek the Lord and uh, pray over any specific needs that you might have. We will encourage you to call in, email in, or Facebook in if you want some prayer. Uh, but we also encourage you to be part. If you're with us, maybe you're going to only be with us for 10 minutes, maybe a half hour, maybe for the whole hour. Be part of the prayer team here this morning. Uh, wherever you're at, it may not be morning there, but uh, for us it's a semi-morning. Uh, but be part of the prayer team. Uh, join in and uh, pray for others. Uh, it's one of the, you know, uh, it's one of probably one of the things that a lot of people don't do because they become so busy with their own lives. And one of the greatest ways to break out of your comfort zone and to break out of that, uh, 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 turn, that rhythm of just doing our own thing is to take time and mm -hmm. begin to pray and seek the Lord and pray for others. And begin to break through that because uh, that pleases the Lord. And when we think about others, we pray for others. You know, if you serve others, it's one of the, you know, Jesus said, he's going to be greatest in the kingdom. Is going to be servant of all? Well, one of the greatest ways to begin to serve the Lord and serve others is to pray for him. Mm -hmm. And so when you begin to pray for others, it helps you get outside <laughs> of yourself. It's very surprising uh, how... Uh, enjoyable it can be because literally, you know, the Bible says over in Isaiah 56, 7, he says that he will give you joy in his house of prayer. He calls us to be, our calling is to be a house of prayer as the church. And that's really where he gives you joy. When you begin to tap into a level of prayer and a level of sacrifice in your life where you really tap into the joy of the Lord, it's like, wow, this is great. You know, I mean, the, the joy of the Lord is great. The joy of the Lord really is, the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, it's a place of freedom. The joy of the Lord is where you really tap into the grace of God, the mercy of God. You know, there's a lot of dimensions between here and there because we, we really do have to humble ourselves. We really do have to ask God to forgive us of our wrongdoing. We do need to repent from our own wicked ways. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of part of the calling of every believer, of every person. You know, God calls us all to repent. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's a way of life, you know, to, for people that want to communicate with God, relate with God. You can't relate with God out of your own pride or out of your own uh, knowledge or out of whatever you think is good enough. Really, it takes repentance um, and humility yeah. and really honoring our Heavenly Father to relate with Him, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the best things that you can do uh, as a person is to learn how to be a listener. And if you can learn how to listen to God and honor and respect God, you're, you're really making some big leaps in your life spiritually if you can begin to take time to honor the Lord. So, mm -hmm. you know, I open up the program <laughs> with hallelujah. You know, hallelujah means praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then Yah is a short version of Yahweh. So yeah. hallelujah, praise the Lord. You know, but what that literally means is that you all shall praise the Lord. <laughs> that everyone shall praise the Lord. And you know, eventually I say hallelujah and we say praise the Lord for those of us who at this point are believers. But we're calling all men to praise the Lord because at some point in time, every single one of us are going to acknowledge his lordship. Every single one of us are going to come to grips with, my goodness, Jesus, you are Lord. Mm -hmm. Hopefully when that comes, when you come to that place, you still have time in this world to, to grow with him, to know him, to allow him to change things in your life. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about some prayer time or talk about prayer today. If you really need, if you want to come to that place where you want to say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I want to start praising God with my life. You know, prayer is one of the greatest places to start doing that. Amen. Amen. I got Phyllis with me today. Kind of a surprise little visit here. She's <laughs> filling in, but 
Maybe that's what your part your name means, fill this. You're filling in a lot for people, <laughs> right? <Don't> you? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> God, God uses you to fill in the gaps because you know that's what you know standing in the gaps is. It's standing in the gap for others. Amen. So you know, here you are again, Amen. together again. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I really like that when you said about the listening. Uh huh. I, I just you know. We need to really train ourselves when we're ministering to somebody or talking to somebody to really listen, uh -huh. you know, what, to what they're saying. And I think we'll really have an evidence of what's going on in their lives, yeah. you know. And I pray That's for that good. every day that I can be a better listener. Yeah. Because a lot of times I'm so anxious about thinking about what I'm going to say <laughs> when they're finally quiet. And that's not good. You well, know. at least you're being honest about it. Most people <laughs> won't be honest. About it. Most people do that, and they don't tell the truth. But that, that's just what most people do. But they do say that one of the one of the greatest ways ways to honor a person is to listen to listener. what they have to say. Yes, yes. You know, and if it's a you know if, if it's a five year old or a fifty year old, you know, I mean, you know, uh, some people, you know, most people don't have a lot of time for others. That's right. You know? And it takes patience, too. Uh -huh. You know, it takes patience yeah. to just really listen. But I, I got this word um, years ago from Psalm 139.4 because I always had this thought, God, do you really hear me when I pray? He listens to you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but it says, For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. So if That's he good. knows what we're going to say before we even say it, then we know that he hears our prayers. That's good. That's oh. really good. What was that? Which, That's what? Psalm 139, verse 4. 139? Yeah. That's you. Tell you what, you know, it's, uh, it's so good to meditate the scriptures and the word of God. And I know that, you know, Phyllis has had, you know, you've had a, a, a life of that as a, as a believer learning the value of the truth of the Word of God, Amen. you know, and thinking about it and meditating on it and looking for ways to apply it to our lives, you know. Well, I'm, is, I'm just so thankful, so thankful, and I thank God every day that I'm born again. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And when you know that, you have no fear of death because mm -hmm. you know your name's written in that Lamb's Book of Life and you know you're gonna to go to heaven. It's, uh -huh. it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And that's why we, we pray and pray and pray for our families, our children, our grandchildren, yeah. because we want so much you know, for them to experience that salvation. And in you know, John 3, 16, and everybody knows this scripture, for God so loved the world, that's us, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We're going to live forever. Yeah, We're going to live forever. So praise well, you know, God. That's, that scripture, I, you know, just kind of tagging into that scripture a little bit. A lot of times that scripture, you know, people have used that kind of like a, you know, a passport to heaven. You know, I mean, when, when I leave this world, I'm going to heaven, which it, it is. I mean, in a sense of, you know, if it's in your heart or if Jesus is in your heart, but it also means that you will have everlasting life starting when you said yes to Jesus as your Savior. So you have everlasting life now. You don't have everlasting life when you leave this body. We have everlasting life now. Yes. And so we get to draw from our account of everlasting life now. Amen. And, you know, it's uh, available it's, to it's, us. It's, yeah, it's supernatural. Everlasting life that overcomes death, that overcomes yeah. sickness, that overcomes depression, that overcomes discouragement, the things of this world. Yes. You know, will you now have that abiding within you? That's right. And see, that's the same. John 3, you know, Jesus said to Nicodemus when Nicodemus came to him in the middle of the night and Jesus asked him, he said, uh, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus made it really plain. He said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he mm -hmm. cannot see the kingdom of God. And of course, Nicodemus, he didn't really understand what he was saying. He said, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter back the second time into his mother's womb and be born? 
But Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So he made wow. it pretty plain. <laughs> pretty plain. And the truth of this, that same truth applies there that a lot of people think he's talking about just entering into the kingdom when I leave this world. But it, ha it has to do with now. Yes. Uh, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, John, you know, uh, or Matthew 6, 33, meaning the kingdom, the, he says the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. You know, so it's now. Yes. It's not just when I leave this world. A lot of people feel like, you know, oh, well, I, you know, yeah, I got saved five years ago. Or I got saved, <laughs> you know, 10 years ago. And, you know, well, what are you doing with what God gave you? Well, you know, I'm, I try to be a good person and all yeah. that. But if you'll seek first the kingdom, the kingdom's within you. That's right. And the kingdom of God is a, a superior kingdom than the kingdoms of, the, of this world. It's the, the kingdom of the rule of the, of the Holy Spirit, the rule of God in our life. You know, and if we totally, totally surrender, you know, just totally give ourselves, humble ourselves before him and surrender to him. And, you know, it says we got to die to what we want. Yeah. You know. That's right. Die to our flesh and be led by the Holy Spirit. We can have a little bit of heaven right here on this earth. <laughs> That's exactly right. Amen. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, because we're, we, our, our flesh life or our worldly life is the problem. <laughs> right. you know, you know those are the obstacles when we can learn how you know uh, Paul said I'm not we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices you know one of the devices of the enemy is to try to get us hooked back into our flesh life that's right or try to get us hooked back into our old habits or to the worldly habits but if we can develop kingdom habits and spiritual habits yes. that are that will will gradually lead to a kingdom lifestyle and a spiritual lifestyle then we're really you know, doing what Jesus said, you know, we're, we're, you know, mature disciples, you know, disciples. A disciple is, is basically a disciplined follower of Jesus Christ. Right. That's a good They spiritually, a disciple is a disciplined follower of Christ. Disciplined in the spirit, disciplined, uh, they've disciplined their flesh to be followers of God and to be yielded to the life of Jesus and the life of, of the life of the Spirit. That's so, good. you know, when you are a disciple, you're disciplined in spiritual matters in your life. And you, you no longer are unruly. You no longer are under the dominion of the flesh, That's you right. know, or of the world. The spirit of this world doesn't, you know, when, when the world comes in and starts to make demands upon you, you recognize it and you begin to submit yourself to the life of the Spirit. Yeah, like when you're led of the Spirit, you're going to recognize anything that's a thought or whatever that yeah. you know is not... Taking you down the wrong path yeah. or trying to get you off, off the things of God. Yeah. You know, and I just want to encourage everybody out there. I think this is so important. And I, I you know, to put on the whole armor of God each and every day. Yeah. And I do that for myself and for all my family, that whole arm of God. Um, you know, you, our loins are girt about with truth. We have on the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We have on the helmet, which is salvation. And we have a great big shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of the devil. And we got the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that word of God is quick, it's sharp. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit yeah. and the joints and marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's 412, what, Romans 412, I think. Yeah. Yep. No, no, Hebrews. Hebrews 412. Yep. 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 Amen. Well, you know, what you're saying there is, you know, truth. And what you're saying, uh, what Phyllis is saying there. You know, people that people that are spiritually minded uh, would have heard what she just said. But if you're not spiritually minded, that just sounds like a bunch of hokey. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, but well, I'm just saying that that's that's the difference of having been trained to have have a spiritual hearing and to have your heart trained in the things of God. You recognize the importance of the righteousness of a, uh, the breastplate of righteousness. You realize the importance of the helmet of salvation. That's right. Yeah, you know, as kids, we, you know, we teach our kids to put on the full armor, you know, and it seems kind of cutesy, but as, in reality, as you grow up, you realize how important that really is to guard your mind. Yes. Oh, you yes. know, to guard your emotions, 
to, you know, to guard your heart, to pick up the, the shield of faith. You know, I was just reading about that over in Habakkuk this morning. I believe it was 2.14, that the just shall live by faith, mm -hmm. which was, you know, Martin Luther came up with that, and it literally was the Reformation that changed the world and brought us freedom, you know, freedom to uh, worship God and freedom of uh, to, to know God personally as opposed to through a religious system. You know, the just shall live by the faith that God has given them in yes. their own heart. Yes. So, I mean, there's so much to being spiritually trained in the word of God. You would have, if you were spiritually trained, you would have heard the things that she just spoke, how serious and real and important each and, each and every one of those truths are, you know, but you got to go, you got to submit yourself to the Lord and to his training in your life. You know? you know, I don't know if this is true of everybody, but for me, uh, I used to, before I got born again, I used to really uh, try to read the scriptures. I mean, I did, I, and it just didn't click or something. But when I got born again, then the word just come alive unto me. And I don't know if that happens to everybody, but it sure happened to me, you know? Well, which is exactly what you just said. And unless a man be born again, he cannot see oh. the kingdom of God. Okay. So, That's okay. exactly what you just said. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I mean, because when you're born again, and, you know, then your eyes are open. You know, the veil is taken away. Okay. And you can see the kingdom of God. See, I'm learning your, something your new Your spiritual every day. eyes, you know, and not only your eyes, but your spiritual senses now are open. So you're hearing. Okay. You know, your spiritual That's wisdom and understanding, your, the understanding of your heart. That's good. Your senses, which uh, your, uh, the, the fragrance of Christ, you can, you can now sense the fragrance of the Lord, That's you know. Good. So your spiritual, so you, your spirit man has spiritual senses, just like your physical man has physical senses. And when you're born again, your spiritual senses are awakened to God. Thank you. <laughs> See, so, I learn so, something yeah, new every day. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I kind of, personally, I kind of depend on that whole truth right there in my spiritual life Amen. immensely. Well, you know, thanks for joining us today. And we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to take a break here in a second. And, and, and then we're going to come back and pray. But I just want to pray for everybody watching right now that, uh, that each of you uh, just really open your heart. Yes. Lord, I just pray that each of those that are watching today, God, would just say yes to you in their, in their life, say yes to Jesus. Lord, uh, that you would pierce through any of the darkness or any of the, uh, any of the confusion, any of the fear. Lord, any, any torments, anything, to God, that is trying to bind their life up, God. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray, God. I pray for freedom. I pray for fire. pray for fresh fire. I yes. pray for fresh anointing. I pray, pray for fresh wind and, and the breath of heaven upon their spirit. Lord God, that the, Lord, the weakness of God is, is greater than the strength of man. Lord, the, 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 the immense things that they might even be facing in their life, Lord. Lord God, the breath of heaven and the simplicity of God can break through that. And I pray, God, that you would just, that they would just open up to, to you, say yes to Jesus, and be willing, Lord God, to, to learn your ways, be willing to be taught of the Lord, be willing to meditate the word of God and to, and to pray, be honest to the Lord and open their heart and life and let you begin to, to build an altar, Lord, of prayer and, and intercession and, and in their heart and in their life, Lord God, where they come to know you and walk with you. Lord, let us pray that kind of a prayer life, a depth and a truth of a prayer life, God, that is meaningful in their life, Lord God, where they can grow and, and, and increase in the things of God and in, in their relationship with God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to take a break right now. Donette's going to do, go, uh, do There's Somebody Out There. So we have some time just to worship. And then Phyllis and I are going to come back and, and finish praying for you, okay? And praying for the needs that are out here. So amen. God bless. We'll be right back. Okay. You good? There's somebody out there hurt and confused An innocent child being abused, there's somebody out there whose heart is breaking in two. There's somebody out there feeling alone, 
Somebody out there who thought it was cool to keep taking chances, thinking they'd never lose. So they're hooked on a feeling that's left them empty and full. There's somebody out there who can't quite decide. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Somebody out there needing the touch of God, and that's why we're here today to pray with you. And, uh, and you know, we always, all, always want to encourage not only prayer here, because, you know, we're, we're standing in the gap here just because we can, and, and it's, it's the heart of God. But it's also, it's really what we're doing here. God wants the church to do everywhere, in every community, in every city. In every town, he wants the church yep. to stand in the gap and to pray for the needs of their community, to pray for the needs of their community of faith or for their church body or whatever. And if the church would actually pray and believe God, we, you know, uh, we'd really see some things really begin to happen, That's you know, right. that, uh, that don't happen when people don't pray or when people are are just uh, totally under the sway of this world or totally in the grip of this world. If you, you know, get off the merry-go-round of this world and, and begin to press into God, there's some things that will begin to happen. So uh, somebody out there, that's why we're here. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So hallelujah. Um, we got, uh, that's a praise report. I don't know if you want to give that one. Amen. <clears throat> this is a praise report from Karen. She says, thank you for your prayers. Eye surgeries went well. 2020 vision in one eye, praise God. 2030 vision in the other eye. So thank you, Jesus, for doing a work in Karen's heart and life and her eyes. In Jesus' thank name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord. Amen. And we want to hear any praise reports you get out there. If you get answers to prayer, we'd love to hear from you. And I'd love to. I've, I've said this all along. I've never heard a thing, but I'd, I'd love to hear somebody get a breakthrough in their prayer life. You know, because we encourage. I'd love to hear somebody find a place in their prayer life where it's really 
life to them where it's really kind of they've gotten to a whole a whole new flow of God in their life. So that to me is one of the things that I feel like I live for. Um, got one here for Daryl, another praise report. Surgery went well on October 5th. Um, could not pull old lead wire, place new, pay, okay, pay, uh, put, put a new pacemaker in and is at home recovering. So that was for Daryl. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for Lord for victory there for Daryl. And we just pray, God, for you continue to help him to fully recover, Lord, and, and, and to fulfill and finish, Lord, his race and his walk with you, God, to be used of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I got another one here for, uh, it's another praise report and a prayer request. Courtney uh, had a, had a baby girl. Courtney is giving, Courtney Connor had a baby girl. Courtney is giving praise to God. The staff there were, say, were saying how fast and easy it went. She, she said she's thankful for everyone's prayers and that she felt the prayers. She is still believing the Lord for a miracle for her heart valves. Please continue to pray for, for her heart valve. Heart valve. So, so she's had, had a safe and a healthy delivery for her baby, which is thank you, Lord, thank for that. Jesus. That's huge. And, uh, and for her heart valves to fully recover. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for Lord, hearing the prayer and being there, God, for her child, for her delivery, Lord, in Jesus' name. But we pray, God, for, uh, for um, Courtney's full recovery, God, from her heart valves, God. And that, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you are her creator, God. You are, Lord, we pray for your hand to be upon her, God, and that she would continue to look to you and believe you, God, for a full recovery, God. Lord, for her heart, Lord, and for her physical body, Lord, that you were able to do exceeding abundantly, Father, above all that we could ask or think, Lord, according to your power that is at work within us, God, we claim that over Courtney's <clears throat> body, over her heart, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. A viewer just called in and uh, said she loved the video. The song was beautiful. And she said, uh, please pray for WTJR and Donette. So Father, right now in the powerful name of Jesus, we do pray for WTJR. We pray that they'll continue to have enough support come in to keep WTJR on the air. Okay, and Lord. Father, that you continue to bless and, and anoint the people that do their uh, messages or, uh, on the TV. And we do lift up Donette to yes. you and ask your blessings upon her. God, just help her, guide her, direct her, help her in every area of her life, Father God. And we just give you praise and honor and glory for that. She's yes. a beautiful you, Christian Lord. lady. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You got anything to add? Amen. I, no, I think that, um, you know, Aaron and Ur that came in alongside Moses when they were in battle and lifted up oh. his arms. Mm -hmm. And when his arms were lifted up, the, the, the army would succeed in battle. And when his arms were dropped down, he, he would not win the battle. It seems crazy. It seems like, you know, just uh, impossible to even believe that that can be true. It was true. It, and it is true today that if we lift up our arms with, without, doubt, or without doubt and wrath and doubting, yeah. you know, that we can have spiritual victory. And spiritual victory means victory in life. And uh, so we, we pray that for Donette. We pray that for those at WTJR that they have a spirit of faith, that they have their hearts and minds and lives lifted up to see Jesus, to see God in all that they do here within the staff and within this ministry here because, you know, its main purpose is to lift Jesus up. Amen. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered, that you be exalted in all that is done, Lord, through the ministry here, and that they have a spirit of faith, God, that they constantly have that. Many times people get uh, off track in different things in their life and they can so easily justify it because of what they do and the busyness and so forth. But when you're in a ministry of faith, you all the time have to have an excellency. You know, you, you are on, you're on the front lines, <laughs> you know, 
and you're lifting up the name of Jesus on the front lines and you're constantly needing to walk by faith. Well, we are all called to live there, but those who are walking in ministry there seem to have a higher standard held up to them by others even around them. So Father, we just bless them. We thank, we pray that their arms be lifted up. God, we, we lift up their arms. We lift up their hearts. We bless them, God. We pray, Father, that they would feel supported and blessed and be supported and blessed, yes. Father, by the community of faith, God, that mm -hmm. Lord, that, that stands with them and that hears them and watches them and supports them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Um, have one here for um, uh, Justin and Stephanie in Bloomington uh, that they would have no more miscarriages, uh, that she would have healing for her body, uh, that they would be able to uh, um, have raised their family according to the will and the purpose of God. Um, she's had a, some kind of a dysfunction within her system that uh, has made it difficult for her to uh, to deliver and to raise to, to ha give birth. And so, Father, we just uh, plead the blood of Jesus over them, over her, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you, God, Lord, that we've heard so many testimonies of God turning around the situations like this where they even had been told by the doctors and you'll never have children and two or three children later they <laughs> they they got them so lord we claim that over justin and stephanie and over stephanie's body lord god that you are see you're able to do father things that we can that, that even the doctors say are impossible it can't be done you are the great physician god and we just father claim your healing and your turning around god within her body god for you to lord touch and breathe and reach into her life lord god and turn things father lord god for her to lord bear Lord God, a child and to give birth to children, Father, for them to have the family, Lord, that they want to have, God. Lord God, that it would be for your glory, God, that yes, their yes. birth and their lives and their family, God, would, Lord, be for the glory of the Lord, God. Lord, yes. just, Lord, we just pray for your breath of heaven over them, God. Let them, Lord, receive, God. Lord God, the, the, the miracle working, Father. Lord God, presence of the Lord in their life, Lord God, to turn around, Lord God, what the enemy tried to, dis to steal, kill, and destroy from their life, Lord God, and to, Lord, bring, Father God, life, Lord God, to them. Life in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. 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 Yes. Makes me think of, uh, I had a new great-granddaughter, the fifth of uh, this month, a couple of days ago. Yeah. And uh, I just, that'll be 11. 11 great grandchildren. Wow. And I just pray that that little girl, the mother, Rachel, is a very, very calm and, and uh, she's nursing the baby. And usually when the, the mother's real calm, the baby will be great. So we just pray for them and ask that God bless that family. And, and uh, they live in Seattle, Washington. So. Amen. Amen. Well, it's pro probably partially result of some of your prayers too. Right? <laughs> oh my yes. <laughs> I pray for all of them every day. I want to lift up Logan. It says he's paralyzed and in a wheelchair. Mm. And we know that uh, we serve a miracle working God. And we just lift up Logan. Father, we just ask you to touch him with the power, the power of your Holy Spirit and just begin to go from the top of his head all the way Thank down through his body, Father, with that healing power that only the Holy Spirit can give, God can give. And for we just pray for his complete healing. And so, Logan, Thank we just Lord. believe and we're... We are believing for total healing for you, and we just thank, thank the Lord, you, Lord for it in Jesus' yes. name. Yes, Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We speak life, Lord, yes. over him, God. Yes. Life in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, Amen. Lord, raise him up, Father, from the bed of affliction, Lord, yes. in the name of Jesus, God. Amen. Be strength, Father, to his physical body, to his legs, Lord God, to his body, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. Amen. Lord, we claim the resurrection anointing. Lord, the resurrection life, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. We speak the name of Jesus over him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, uh, everything that we need in life is wrapped up in the name of Jesus. Yes. You know, he is our redeemer. He redeems us from destruction. He delivers our life from, from the enemy, from the schemes of the enemy. 
All things uh, that pertain to life and godliness are wrapped up in him, in his name. And, you know, when, you, you know, the, the name of a person represents everything that they have to offer. When you get the signature of, of the president or you get the signature of somebody mm -hmm. who's uh, uh, important or a millionaire or billionaire or owner of, uh, you know, 10,000 businesses or whatever. I mean, they have... They've, they, their name carries weight. Well, the name of Jesus carries weight. And, he's, and he says in his name, his name is a refuge. His name carries with it the very uh, substance to bring, to bring to pass the things that represent him. Mm -hmm. He's given us his name. So when we speak the name of Jesus mm -hmm. over these bodies, even if it doesn't happen immediately, it can happen mm -hmm. and many times does happen immediately. But if it doesn't, if you'll stand in faith, if you'll rise up and begin to s continue to stand in faith, all that is in that name can come to you, mm -hmm. can be received by you. If you'll stand in faith, he says, if we will stand and pray and believe that we receive it, we shall have what we mm -hmm. prayed for in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Also in uh, Matthew 19, 26, it says there's nothing impossible with God. Nothing. Amen. So I like Amen. that. We, we so got... the mountains shall be removed. Amen. When Amen. we speak to these things. That's how faith works. It's one of the, one of the primary essential ways the way faith works. When we pray, we usually speak. We speak the truth or we try to speak the promises of God or we speak Amen. to the issues or to the demonic forces that we sense there. Uh, the words of our mouth are God-given uh, tools and vehicles of authority in the earth. God spoke his spoke the worlds into existence. Now we were even created in his image and by the words that we speak, we are moving in the way that God has called us to move to be creative beings. And when we speak, we, we release his authority Amen. and we release his anointing for, for mm -hmm. a spiritual effectiveness in the earth in Jesus name against the enemy and for God. Amen. Hallelujah. You mentioned mountain. I want to read this. This is Mark 11, 23, 24, and 25. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, and that's anyone that's out there, shall say unto this mountain, that's any kind of a problem, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the word of the Lord. <laughs> That's, That's the word, the of, word the of the Lord. You know? <laughs> Amen. Now the natural man, the natural man hears that and just goes on and <laughs> just forgets about what he's even thinking about. It's like, you know, you're, well, yeah, whatever. Yep. You know, but the spiritual man says, your spirit man leaps to these truths. So if you want to be spiritually minded, read the word. Amen. Read the word get, and, and t until that word gets on the inside of you. Read the word, meditate the word until that word gets on the inside of you because he says the words that I speak are spirit and they're alive. Yep. And 25, verse 25 says, and when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So it's so Amen. important to walk in forgiveness. Amen. 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 Yeah, because... Uh, because our system can get clogged up. You got that right. <laughs> so we want to unclog, unplug the wells, unclog so that there's a fresh flow Amen. of God and a fresh flow of his blessing in our life. Thank you, Lord. I've got one here for uh, Courtney in Minneapolis under a severe demonic attack. Uh, de depression needs deliverance and wisdom to fight the good fight of faith to cast down every thought and imagination, feeling and doctrine that exalts itself against the will and the knowledge of God. There's a mouthful, but God can do it and will do it. So Father, we lift up Courtney, Lord. We stand with her, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we plead the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus over her life, Lord, over her mind and her will and her emotions. 
Lord, and we, Father, we take authority, God, over the schemes of the enemy against her mind and against her th her heart and her, her feelings in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we plead the blood and we just, Lord, we take authority and we break every attack and we cancel every word curse and we cancel every uh, assignment of hell against her life yes. in Jesus' name. We cancel it, we cut it off, God, with the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Father, we break it now in Jesus' name and yes. we release your anointing for life. Lord, we, re we release your anointing for joy. We release your anointing for deliverance. Father, we release, Father, Lord, your anointing, Father, for freedom, Father. For, Lord, because it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. No longer to be entangled with a yoke of bondage. Father, we pray that the yokes of bondage will be broken. And we pray, God, Lord, that you'd stir her heart, Lord, for truth, oh God. Lord, we pray, God, that you would stir her heart and her mind, Lord God, to, Lord, to be taught of the Lord, Lord, to, to learn of the Lord, to be taught of the, the Spirit of God, to, Lord, to take a stand in the Spirit, Father, Lord, for life, Lord God, against the enemy, God, mm -hmm. against the, Lord, the spirit of this age, against the things of this world, God, Lord, that she begin to, uh, Father, Lord God, put down her foot, oh God, and take a stand for, Lord, her, the, the great provision of God for her life, Lord God, Lord, and claim life and wholeness and peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we claim that over her life. We pray, Lord, that you'd help her to see how, Lord God, even as Phyllis was praying that, to see how, Lord, to put on the armor of light, God, to be covered and kept by the power of God, yes. Lord God, daily in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, Hallelujah. And I have a scripture for Courtney. It's in uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 5 casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You've got to take that thought captive and yeah. get it out of there yeah. and replace it with the Word of God. Amen. 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 I mean, a lot of people, you know, say, well, you know, I can't do that. I mean, I have so many thoughts every day. I can't, <laughs> I can't battle those thoughts every day. Well, you're going to do something with them. Yeah. You're going to either obey them or disobey them. I mean, they, they come through your mind, your thoughts. I mean, you know, at some point, it's like what uh, Kenneth Hagin said. He said, I can't stop the birds from, from flying over my head, but I can sure stop them from coming and making a nest in my yeah, hair. Landing. <laughs> you know, he says, that, you know, so I can't stop every thought and feeling that comes to my mind, but I can sure decide what I'm going to do, do with it. Either I'm going to meditate on it or I'm going to cast it down. Cast it out. And, you know, if I start casting it down, I'm, I'm starting to take authority over these things and I'm not letting them make a nest in my hair. <laughs> and, and I'm not and I'm not fellowshipping with the devil. I'm making the decision. You know what? I don't agree with that yet. You know what? I just don't receive that. You know what? I just reject that. You know what? I just take authority over that. Amen. You know what? I rebuke that. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and that's how you do it. You know, I, I say this to everybody, you know, say, you know, being a pastor, I say this to everybody all the time. You're going to say yes and no the rest of your life. And if you'll be, learn how to do that spiritually, you can be successful if you will say yes and no to the right things. Mm -hmm. Truly To free. say yes and no. That's it. You can mm -hmm. say yes, say yes. If you can say no, say no. You say yes and no to the right things, what, what God wants you to say yes and no to, and you're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good. You're going to be Thank free. You, Lord. Too. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, have one here for um, Gabriel, <clears throat> six years old, cute little Gabriel. Suddenly has a twitching of his head and needs God's touch. Amen. Amen. Father, we just bless Gabriel. Let's thank you for the work that you're doing in his life, God. He's such a precious little guy and, and uh, under the influence of heaven, Father. And you, you're doing a great work in his family. Lord, in his life, his mom's life, his, his family, his dad, Lord. So, so um, Lord, we just, Lord, we draw the lines, God. We take a stand here, Lord, of any try influence of the enemy trying yes. to yes. come in and trying to uh, influence him or trying to uh, bring uh, any kind of um, work of the enemy either against him or his mom as well because I know we're standing for her knees to be to be made whole in yes. Jesus name. So we pray we stand with both of them right now for Jody and for Gabriel in the name of Jesus. Father, we stand in the covenant right now. Lord, we have covenant rights. 
Lord, that they have covenant rights. And so, Father, we don't receive any, we don't receive fear, Lord. We don't receive doubt. We don't receive, and we don't receive uh, uh, the work of the enemy that is trying to steal, kill, and destroy from their forward momentum and their for forward movement in God. So, Father, we just claim breakthrough in their life. Yes. We stand yes. with them and they stand yes. for truth as they stand for their healing and their wholeness, God. We, Lord, we submit ourselves to God. We resist the enemy and he flees from us. Yes. So yes. we do that right now. We do that with them. We yes. stand with them, Amen. Lord, for God, in God, of God. And we reject and rebuke the enemy Lord, from his life, from Gabriel's life right now, and from Jody's life and from her niece. In the name of Jesus, we command this infirmity to go. We command these attacks to go in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for your peace and for your presence and for your power in their life, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to take a break right now. And uh, George has a word of encouragement for us. And then Phyllis and I are going to be right back to finish praying with you. Okay? Amen. So God bless. Good Friday morning, everyone. Welcome once again to the set of Pastor Speaks, coming to you live from the studios of the mighty WTJR in scenic downtown historic Quincy, Illinois. Uh, we want the phones out in the lobby to ring. We want to hear your prayer requests. And more importantly, we want to hear your praise reports, folks. We want to hear uh, for ourselves, and uh, we want to give you the opportunity to tell the entire world what great and mighty things the Lord God is doing in your life. Amen. Um, since this is a prayer program, I thought today I might share something that uh, might help you in your prayer walk. You know, I, I know a lot of believers out there uh, can get intimidated by, uh, you know, they think, well, you know, I, I don't know how to speak all that eloquently. And, you know, I, I just can't make my prayers flow like, you know, like the prayer giants like pra Pastor Gary over here and Phyllis, you know, who have been doing it for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just all intimidated. And, and you know. Really, all prayer is, folks, and I know you've heard this before, but it bears repeating. Um, all prayer is is just talking to God. You know, there's a song out there by Brandon Lake right now. Uh, it's very popular called "Talking to Jesus." Uh, you know, and he, and the, you know, go look that song up because that's that's really all prayer is is just talking to Jesus. And I wanted to share um, a little incident from my life that I I hope will help you in your prayer in your prayer life. Um, I was uh, going through a particular uh, tough spot financially uh, at one point in my life, and I was trying to pray to the Lord, and I was trying to uh, trying to speak faith and trying to quote scripture and and you know trying to be all theological about it in my prayers, and you know I really kind of felt the spirit of the Lord interrupt me, and said to me, "Now is that really how you personally would say that?" And I was like, well, no, I guess not. He said, try it again in your own words. Just say it the way you want it, the way you feel it in your heart. Just say it the way you feel it in your heart. And I thought about it a minute. I said, okay. And I took a deep breath and with all of my heart said, Dad, Satan's trying to steal your tithe. <laughs> I, I think I heard the Spirit of the Lord laugh at that moment. I, I really I kid you not. But, you know... I, um, I really believe that God is, uh, is more attuned to the heart cry rather than the actual words. And I think he's more impressed when we bring a genuine call of our heart to him rather than try and be all, you know, doctrinal and theological and, uh, and frankly stiff and, and uppity about it. Um, just be genuine. Be real. Um, you know, wherever you're at, be there and and don't try to don't don't come to the throne of God and pretend like you are uh, something you're not because uh, he knows don't try to pretend that it's well with my soul when it really ain't well with your soul um, you know just be real be honest and I, I promise you you will grow from that and he will hear you um, you know his his ears are attuned to the cry of the righteous so I just want to encourage you, be real, be genuine in your prayer life. Um, you know, it's good to pray the scriptures. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it, it is. But, you know, when what's going on in your heart isn't that, then, you know, be genuine about it. And just, you know, tell, tell on Satan. <laughs> just tell on Satan if that's what you feel in your heart. Amen. We're going to send it back to the studio and uh, or back to the Pray 16 set, Pastor Gary and 
Phyllis are going to pray and release the power of God into your life. I pray you're ready to receive. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Good word. Good word. Yeah, you know, uh, the genuineness of our faith might be proved more precious than gold. Hallelujah. Talks about over in the over in the New Testament in one of the epistles, and I believe it's Peter. You know, says so the purifying of our faith, you know, the genuineness of our faith. God's that's what God's looking for. So I've got a, I have another scripture to kind of support that in Isaiah. Isaiah 12, 6 says, Cry out and shout, O inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in, Israel in your midst. Cry out and shout. You know, a lot, a lot of times people wouldn't, you know, they, people have a hard time believing that that qualifies some spiritual expression in the church. Cry out and shout. I mean, a lot of people believe that when you go to church, you got to behave, and you got to sit still, and you got to be good, and you know. And you know, Lord showed me years ago and said, you know, a lot of those people out there sitting in the pews, behaving and acting all righteous, you know, are walking in just as much sin as <laughs> as anybody else because you know, just because they're acting all good, doesn't mean they're really walking in the goodness of the Lord, you know. So I'm not saying they're all you know, bad people. I'm just saying, just because you're behaving in church doesn't mean that, you know, you're free. Doesn't mean that you're walking in the freedom of the Lord. Cry out and shout. Be genuine. Be genuine to God. And so that's a good word. That was a good word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, we're going to pray for a couple more uh, prayer requests here. Do you have any you want to yeah. pray for? <clears throat> I'll pray for Stella called in. Uh, the landlord where she was living, they, they sold the house that they were living in and they need to move by November the 4th and they need somewhere to move very soon. So Father God, we just pray in the name of Jesus that you'll open a door, you'll make a way for them. Yes, to yes, find Lord. them a place to move into, Father. And I pray, there's so many people this is happening to and I just pray that, that you will provide, that they'll just believe and they'll receive and They'll just know in their heart of hearts that you will provide a place for them. And just give them your yeah. peace. Yes, God, just help them, guide them, direct them in every way, Father, yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Just let that opening for that place to move into, let it open up yeah. quickly in Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. You know, just to kind of add to that, um, um, and you really, when you're in straits like that, you probably don't usually think like this unless you're a true believer or whatever. But the reality is, is that a lot of times when we're brought to a place of nothingness in our life, we really a lot of times don't realize how much of a good candidate for God we are. Mm -hmm. Because those are the places where God reaches us. When we have lost this or lost that, or we've lost control of this or lost control of that and we feel out of control or we feel at a total loss and it, it is bad i i don't you know i i would never i don't ever want to see anybody reach those times i don't want to see this this person or this family have to go back there again but it is a time to really reach out to God. It yeah. is a time for God to get a hold of you. Yes, that's true. You know, there's so many things that God wants to reveal and begin to do in your life in times of brokenness, <laughs> in times of loss, in times of, you know, just weakness like that. The Bible says in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. Mm -hmm. So there is a outworking of God in these times of real brokenness. So, I mean, when you truly become spiritually uh, minded, you realize how important those times are yes. in your life. Now, a lot of times when you're there, you don't really realize it. I know mm -hmm. it's hard to really, it's hard to really put a high value on it because you know you feel like you've lost everything. But in reality, those really are very valuable times <laughs> for God to get His heart across, to get His truth across, to get His presence across. So we pray that for that family. Yes. And as we're praying for those who have needs here, that God can, can these, that these can be a time of entrance of God into their lives. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's really what we want. And that's what God wants as a father. Amen. Uh, we prayed for, before we came on the program, we prayed for Nick who was, has been having some problems with his, some teeth 
and some complications, and he, he both needs present help, he needs comfort, he needs really delivered from the, the issue, he needs healing. Needs so, so however God can do that. We prayed for him, so we just can, I just want to say we continue to agree yes. in Jesus' name. Yes, God, Lord. do, Lord, what no man can do. God, just pray for help him, God, to break through the, Lord, the pain, this help, Father, we pray for healing, Father. Lord, in his teeth, Lord, in his mouth, God. Lord, we don't know what complications fully, God, what's going on, but, you know, we just pray against any infections or, acid, you know, uh, abscesses or anything in jesus name god we speak life god and we know those battles can be immense god intense lord because of the pain father but we know father you can be a comforter we pray lord for sovereign supernatural help from heaven in his life lord god in jesus name in his mouth god in his teeth mm -hmm. in jesus name mm -hmm. yes lord i know people uh you know uh, Pastor Blaze, when he, he and his wife were up at a he, uh, revival up in Iowa, they were in the middle of a revival up in Iowa, and she had literally had teeth filled in the middle of in the middle of revival. She her teeth were filled, wow. where she was having issues. issues. I mean, and so I mean, not, and that's one of many testimonies I've heard of what God can do. Now I know it doesn't seem fair. It seems, well, <laughs> God, I can't get in the middle of revival, but what He'll do there, He will do anywhere if we will if we will learn to to reach out in faith and grab hold of His promises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a little easier in the middle of revival. It's a little easier in the outpouring of the Spirit. Yes, but it's still the same <clears throat> everywhere. He's still the same God, yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to say before we go off the air that I just encourage you all to put on that whole armor of God every day, every day, and also to find you a, a prayer partner, someone that you can pray with every day. That's good. I have one, it's my daughter, and I tell you what, it's wonderful to do that. And I just encourage you to find somebody to pray with every day, amen. Lift people up, all your family, friends, our country, of course, and uh, all of our governors and mayors and our, our uh, anyone that's in our leadership, they need prayer. They need to know Jesus yeah. as their Lord and Savior. So anyway, I just well, and one of the that. first, and, and in addition to that, he says, you know, over in Timothy, he says, uh, you know, first of all, pray for those who, who are in authority, you that's know, good. Yeah. in positions of authority. And, and uh, we, we pray for our nation. But I just want to say, you know, as impossible as it looks, you know, God is God. Jesus is Lord, and He's He's superior to what's going on in our nation. And as in, and as wrong as things are, and as backwards as things have gotten, and as distorted as things have gotten, and as perverted as things have gotten, the church needs to be pray, The church needs to be praying for the justice of God, yes. the judgment and justice of God, because yes. His just His justice is not complete yet. And he is going to complete his justice in the earth. He is going to complete. And yeah, mercy can triumph over judgment. We want to see people come to the Lord. But he's also a God of justice and judgment. And we pray for that in our nation. We pray for that. We need that desperately. We need yeah. his, we need the justice and judgment of almighty God yes. because that's what, that's how he rules in the earth. That's how he's going to rule. And part of our curse is living under the, the freedom of our flesh and the perversion of our flesh. So church, we need to pray. We need to get into the word. We need to stand in the word and we need to pray for our president, <laughs> pray for, and I'm not saying pray for, pray for him to come to Jesus, but pray for him also to come under justice, the justice of the Lord. And all across the, the states of America, we, the church needs to pray. Amen. Yes, That's yes, what we yes. need to do. Amen. So God bless you. We pray that you have a wonderful week. We pray that you be strengthened with might by, by his spirit and the inner man and that you get a prayer life that is a blessing and full of the joy of the Lord. Amen. Yes. God yes. bless you. We'll talk to you next week. Okay. God bless. God bless. Amen. Amen. <laughs>